Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Basketball Fiends Podcast, a proud member of the RS Kino Podcast Network. I'm one of your hosts, Jesus Sacerdote Jr., and I'm joined by the one and only, you can't clone him, Alex D'Aguilera. And I have to say, Alex, I'm a bit jelly of you because you were lucky enough to have a PlayStation 5. Oh, man, dude, it's it's been a long time coming. Um, a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifices. No. <laughs> <laughs> It was you want to go like, ahead and you know thank your mom, thank your dad, thank uh, you know thank your brother, thank the man upstairs. I don't know if you live in the second floor or first floor. Maybe you have somebody I, up there too. I, I don't know. But, you know. <laughs> well, we don't really like our upstairs neighbors, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's well, man, dude, it it's so hard to get you know any new console or something like that. Like when the PS3 came out, when the PS4 came out, the Xbox is whatever. But I guess to get into it real quick, it was actually during the Field of Dreams game. Oh, wow. When I finally secured it, it was during the Field of Dreams. Actually, my... wasn't it right after we had finished recording last week's episode, right? Or before, because we before, recorded. Okay. Yeah, I got it before the uh, before we recorded. And I didn't want to bring it up because I was like, we just, it was our first show <laughs> back after a week. And I was like, I don't want to like just jump in and be like, I got a PS5, you know, so just to hold off. But I was sitting on the couch watching the game and I had my laptop on my lap and then I had my phone on me and I'm just going back and forth between walmart just trying to like (laughs) add just to add it to my cart and i got it on like the second batch it put me through like okay it's added to your cart and i was like okay then it went through to the checkout and i'm like okay i'm entering my info and i'm waiting for it to i'm waiting to get that notification that like it's out of stock right yeah because i've been heartbroken so many times (laughs) where like like, i'll start to set myself up for this right exactly yeah like let me not get my hopes up and i keep adding more and more in my info and i'm like man like it hasn't stopped yet so this is i haven't gotten this far in a while and then like when i got the confirmation like uh like you know notification thing yeah that your order's been placed i just kind of sat there for like five seconds just like reading it over to make sure that it was real <laughs> just to make sure that like I, what i was reading was correct and then i just like jumped off the couch and i'm doing like all this silent celebration because i didn't want to be super loud <laughs> But oh man, I was just more in disbelief. Like, holy crap, like I actually got it finally. So well, like I Great said, feeling. I am I am jelly of you. Uh uh, when are you expected to receive it? Man, I think it's October 1st. Oh, okay. So you got some, some so I time. got time. So <laughs> since like I'm still in the process of moving, I'm hoping by then like my room will be more set up. Like, I have some ideas for it. I'm gonna um, a bigger room, so getting like a nice little desk for it, a nice little monitor. So you know, making sure that the presentation is is is, is perfect. That way, when well, it comes in, I'm ready. Ready, and, and you know, I'm I'm sure once you set up your PlayStation Five, you'll be able to stream all your favorite shows, be able to stream some NBA games. And speaking of NBA games, earlier this week, the NBA released their NBA opening week and the Christmas games. And, you know, the upcoming NBA season will be the 75th season in NBA history, Alex. And to kick off the 75th season, the first game is going to be the Milwaukee Bucks and the Brooklyn Nets. And while I would have preferred a rematch of the NBA Finals between the Bucks and the Suns, I'm not upset at seeing the Bucks and Nets as the first matchup. You know, that was one of the best series of the, of, of the playoffs last year. And it'll be interesting to see a full and healthy Nets team go up against the defending champions. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you always know, like, you know, opening night, opening week, there's going to be some really fun matchups. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, the Bucks and the Nets. Everyone kind of talks about if the next re- the Nets were fully healthy or if KD had like a half size, smaller shoe. If he know, wore uh, a half size, uh, right. no, if he wore his correct shoe size, there you go. <laughs> right. If he wore his correct shoe size, you know, the Nets might have been uh, where, where, the, where, where the Milwaukee Bucks are at. But nonetheless, I mean. What's done is done. So it'll be interesting to see that matchup. Obviously, you know, like you said, the Nets being fully healthy and sort of possibly getting a preview for maybe an Easter Conference Finals matchup, you know, between them or, you know, at some point in the playoffs, you know, it, it remains to be seen. But I mean, overall, I mean, it just should be fun, man. Opening night. Come on now. Come on now. And then now one of the games that I like to highlight on opening week is Dallas Mavericks versus the Atlanta Hawks, which is essentially Luka Doncic versus Trey Young matchup. You know, granted, they won't be guarding each other, but these two players will forever be linked because they were traded for each other in the same draft. And, you know, Atlanta does have the better team, but I, I still pick Luka over Trey 
just simply j- just by a smidge, by the closest smidge, just because you know I, I like Lucas' game as an overall playmaker. But look, Trey is the better scorer, simply put. You know, I mean, he carried that Hawks team. Not that the Hawks, like I said, the Hawks have a better team than the Mavericks. But I think that's going to be a good matchup, a, a good barometer for both of them. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that point. I think between the two, Luca is a little bit of the better player. He's a little bit more established um, compared to Trey. But, you know, this past season was Trey's, like, big breakout year, whereas we saw with Luca in his um, rookie year. And from then on, like, he's only been in the league, like, what, the, they were both drafted in 2018? At least their fourth year. I think they're entering their fourth year, right? Right. So I think, you know, this is finally, like, us seeing Trey Young coming into a zone where we kind of saw Luca do that a little bit earlier. And that's where I think we give him a little bit more of that slight edge, you know, over Trey Young. But I mean, it's right there. Like now when we look back at that smidge, trade, it's like, it's smidge. so, it's yeah. still so even like whoever would, you know, you know, had it been the other way where Atlanta kept Luca and Dallas kept Trey Young, like either way, it was going to be a win-win situation. So um, it, I don't know. It's just, it, it'll be cool. Just two young stars that, eventually be the faces of this league you know just going head to head should be fun pretty much and then going over to the christmas games but before i do jump on the clear on, on to the christmas game i do want to say i'm not a fan of all the games they pick for christmas except for two and one of them will be the first game that day and it involves trey young and it involves the atlanta hawks paying a visit to the new york knicks at madison square garden now, this was the series that really propelled Trey Young up into the echelon of those great playoff performances of, of all time. He put on that villain mask and he owned it. He loved being the villain. So just having him go back to Minnesota Square Garden, that's going to be a fun game. Man, it's so like just picturesque, picturesque, if that's the way, if I'm saying it right. You know, just him waltzing into the famed Madison Square Garden and just giving it to the Knicks. Who we were, we were once again just heartbroken, but hey, at least they made the playoffs. Uh, but it, baby I think steps it's, for the Knicks, baby steps for the Knicks. That was the baby first step. steps, <laughs> right? And it took a while for that to get to that step, but they got there. Uh, but I, honestly, I hope for that Christmas um, game matchup. You know, it'll be just more of a culmination of just a rivalry between those those two teams. I think uh, sort of this emergence of you know super teams and all that, whatever you want to call it. Um, we haven't really seen much of like rivalries per se. It's just more of like the top dogs, like the Milwaukee's and the Nets going up against each other in the East. And then like the Lakers and the Suns in the West, it'll be nice to see like two teams that sort of have a genuine dislike for each other. Maybe even hate, I don't know. Maybe the Knicks hate the Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would say there's definitely hate on, on that side, but still it's, you know, you know, there's going to be some competition there. Definitely. Now, the second game that, that is maybe one that a lot of people circle is the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Brooklyn Nets. Now, simply put, that is going to be a star-studded matchup. Six all-stars between them, three on each side. You know, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, AD. I mean, that is the matchup, I think. They'll probably be the highest rated on Christmas. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they could, it's like you could just have a three on three pickup game with those guys and it would still probably be the highest right. rated uh, game out, out of that Christmas um, list so yeah I mean it, it'll be cool to see you know these older Lakers these or not, <laughs> I wouldn't say older these um these uh what is it these uh, men that have been around the block these season veterans there the you season go Lakers. the season, season yeah. Lakers I like that that's what I was trying to get at you know guys that have been around the block a few times here and there and I mean hey Brooklyn you know they got you know KD Harden and, and Kyrie so you know they're all set on that end but I mean who doesn't love just like a heavyweight bout between like all-stars and all-stars no you know it it, it has to be said the Nets are the, the big three of the Nets aren't as young neither. They're all, I think, early 30s. I think uh Kevin Durant's 31, James Harden's 32, 31. I think Kyrie's probably 29. So, you know, they're not, you know, youngsters anymore. So, but they're not as seasoned as the Lakers will say, you know. Right. They're kind of like in that prime right, right. Bubble. Prime window, prime window, as mm-hmm. as they like to say, you know. And speaking of the Nets, Kevin Durant was recently on Draymond Green's show on the Bleacher Report Chips which is on YouTube channel. I'm sure there is a podcast of it. So the former Golden State Warriors teammates, um, they got into the infamous clip, you know, where where 
KD and Draymond Green after a Clippers overtime game, uh, after regulation, they kind of got into it. You know, I think that was the game where Draymond Green didn't give the ball to KD and KD was asking for the ball so KD could take the winning shot and Draymond Green just fumbled it and they went into over, into overtime. Now, what was funny, not, not funny, but interesting was Draymond Green asked him, you know, did that have anything to do with Kevin Durant leaving? And here's what Kevin Durant said. He said that argument had nothing to do with him ultimately leaving the Warriors. And I quote, it wasn't the argument. It was the way that everybody, Steve Kerr, acted like it didn't happen. Bob Myers and then tried to discipline you. And I think that that, that would have put the mask over everything. So, Alex, I'm not sure if you got a chance to listen to, to the interview, but it was that, that was probably the, the, the piece that, that kind of went viral after the interview came out on Wednesday. Yeah, no, I, I did watch the interview. I mean, it's interesting. It's it's always, um, you know, I already said interesting, but just intriguing to watch um, players, you know, talk to each other. You can definitely tell that they're um, more comfortable, more open, um, you know, talking about certain things that, you know, we had never really heard that, you know, what went on with Steve Kerr and, um, you know, Bob Meyer handling that situation. So now I'll bring some more uh perspective more detail into you know what really went down you know af in the aftermath of that whole argument you know we saw the you know the the face of everything but we didn't see you know what was all behind it so i find it kind of, I, I you know it's it's very interesting how you know just the way that whole situation was handled was sort of like that nail in the coffin you know for for kd leaving and i love the you know the comparison he made with the last dance where he was just like man i wish you would have just you know, handled it, you know, sort of like how, how, how I was with Scotty when he pretty much like let down that whole Bulls team and, and sitting on the bench, you know, it should have just been the players coming together, mostly Katie and Draymond yeah. saying, Hey, we screwed up. You know, we let this whole team down getting into this and creating all this hoopla, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, Hey, you know, water under the bridge and let's get on it. But yeah, it's, 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 it's eye opening to see, um, you know the intricacies of how it was handled. I, I actually, I'm glad you brought up that point because I had that in in my notes about KD bringing up the last dance, and he said, "Had hey, we had that situation where we just handled it ourselves, kind of like how the Bulls handled it, he said we would have been fine." Something else that I found interesting was Green saying, uh, "You know, whether it's, you know whether we're speaking on that topic, he said, in my opinion, they fucked it up, meaning the Warriors front office." fucked up what the Warriors had between themselves, what the players had, you know? So it, it was pretty in interesting. I know that's another clip that, that also kind of made the round saying, you no, know, is Draymond, will, will, will he be treated differently now because he just was so open about it? You know, and, and speaking about that openness, you know, between these two players, you kind of touched upon the, upon the subject. There were so many great tidbits in that interview that, any NBA fan was just soaking up, right? Because there's things that sometimes players don't share that with the media. And, and that's why these type of interviews are great because a player feels more compelled to open up to another player, especially if it's a teammate, as opposed to a member of the media. And KD does answer how his relationship with the media has changed during his NBA tenure. You know, he said that when he entered, he was like, I thought of them as they knew more than me because they've been covering the game so long. But as I've been in this league for now, what, more than 10 years, years his perception of the media has has changed you know uh so i i, I definitely like these interviews uh, when players interview each other you know good on draymond for getting kd on and for kd for being so honest in his answers you know i think that was one of the things everybody wanted to see is is how much did their little fight in that in that clippers matchup affect kd's decision and look kd said i i wanted a Repeat. I wanted that because that's so hard to do in the NBA. I think the last team that did it was the Los Angeles Lakers, and we haven't had a three-peat since then. Yeah, I mean, I think with that, you know, tidbit that you mentioned about how KD's perception of the media has changed, you know, compared to when he first got into the league, um, as to now, uh, you know, I take it, uh, you know, in Strider, just as a learning experience as someone you know, being super young, getting into this media media business as to, you know, just how to how to approach those things. You know, you look at, you know, we, we keep referring to the last dance, you know, and Michael Jordan, how he's just so, you know, you saw the, the flurry of media attention he got during his career, where it's like, you don't blame the guy for not wanting to talk to the media at all, you know, once he retired and look how long it took for him to finally, you know, really open up. Yep. 
yeah. you know, at that. It took years, you know, for that to happen. And, you know, I give credit to players that where they take it upon themselves and say, hey, if I'm going to open up about these things, you know, I'm going to do it uh, with someone that I'm comfortable with. And I think it's uh, uh, a good challenge for the media to, you know, try and adjust and say, hey, what we, what can we do um, to better ourselves, to, to, to do a better job, to be able to um, rebuild some of these relationships, some of these you know, um, connections with these players in order to not, you know, you know, just to pry, you know, these stories out of these guys just to get, you know, clickbait stories or anything like that, but just, you know, do solid, uh, you know, objective journalist work (laughs) pretty much. Definitely. You know, one of the players that, that recently opened up, uh, was Carmelo Anthony. He was on another player hosted podcast, the other smoke show podcast hosted by Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson on Showtime, I, I believe. And he was very forthcoming on some topics that uh, fans have always wondered about or, 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 you know, just thought about, you know, and he dropped some nuggets of information we didn't know before. The main one was that before the 2003 NBA draft, the Detroit Pistons promised Melo, promised them that they would be drafting him with the second overall pick in the draft. And here's what he said. To this day, I still think about that. Those are Carmelo's words. And he followed up with, they promised me, telling him, yo, we taking you. They, they told him this all the way up to draft day, you know, and, and they even mentioned, you know, you're going to be sharing playing time with, with Tayshaun Prince. I mean, if you're mellow at that age and you're hearing all this, you're like, I'm going number two. I'm going number two. And then all of a sudden draft day comes and they're select Darko Milicic, which he might be up there as, you know, one of the greatest draft busts in, in, in NBA history. But that was something that I don't think nobody knew that, that the Pistons have promised Melo, hey, we're taking you. Yeah, I mean, we all kind of look at that 03 draft, and unfortunately, the big, uh, geez, what's the word I'm looking for? Elephant in the room <laughs> was Darko Militich, you know, getting drafted number two. And it was just kind of like, oh man, like, why would the Pistons, you know, why did the Pistons draft that guy? <laughs> you know, like, what, or like, you know, what if they drafted Melo? And then now we're hearing this, like, damn, like they were actually going to draft dude, and then they flipped for some, for, for God knows what reason that they flipped last minute, but it, it, it's, it's shitty to, you know, to see a team promise this to a 18, 19 year old kid whose dream is to be in the NBA and for him to go number two to a team that would, that would be eventual champions and to pretty much just rip that away from him. It's like, you know, it's, it, it's, it's messed up on Detroit Center. And now I'm just curious, like what the, you know, what the thought process was on draft night to just say, Hey, you know what, let's flip the script and let's, pick up Darko Milicic. Yeah, it, you know, it's it's like one of those biggest what ifs, you know, because I mean, if, if if you think about it, if the Pistons draft Melo, that changes his career trajectory and pretty much would have created a Pistons dynasty. Let's remind people, that year that they selected Darko, they went to the finals and they beat the Los Angeles Lakers who were stacked. They had Kobe, Shaq, Karl Malone, Gary Payton. They just wiped them off the floor. I think they won the series 4-1, if I'm not mistaken. I think three of those wins yeah. were by double digits. So, I mean, you you think about that. That would have been a dynasty. The potential lineup would have been Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton, Carmelo Anthony, Rasheed Wallace, and Ben Wallace. And then your sixth man is Tayshaun Prince. Get out of here, man. That is yeah, a dynasty right nuts. there. That you know. So, it's just, you know, that, that makes you think, you know, because Detroit did go to the back to the finals in 2004. They lost to the Spurs in seven. If they have Carmelo, I'm sure they go back to back. I'm sure that was all five they... that they lost to the Spurs. Oh yeah, oh, oh in the 2004, 2005 NBA, NBA season. Yeah, yes. yeah. So yeah, but yeah, no, they, it's it's it, you know, like I said, it's one of the biggest what ifs, and it's also, I mean, you think about it, and it's like, what was it that they saw in Darko that they say, you know what, let's take him over Carmelo Anthony, who had just won the national championship with Syracuse. He led Syracuse to the national championship, so so he already had that. You know, he already had that title, so he already had that that championship uh, drive, that championship mentality, and then to to go with Darko, and then and then on on, on top of that, they didn't even play Darko. That's, yeah, that, that, that's also that you know, like so so it was a wasted draft pick, a number two wasted draft pick. Yeah, well, and I think too, what what we have to re- remember is now we're in the present where we saw what Darko Milicic ended up being versus what Melo ended up becoming. So it's easy to say now, like, why in the hell did you draft Darko Militich? But we kind of have to rewind to 2003 
And, you know, we don't know what these guys would end up being. I mean, I think probably LeBron James was the, was the safest bet to say, like, yo, he was probably going to be good. But at the same time, you got to look at the draft board and say, hey, as as much potential as these guys have, like, you don't know what these guys may turn out to be as talented as they are. See, and, and that's where I'm going to disagree with you, because I think Carmelo winning that title at, at Syracuse really just shot him off the board so much. You know, now granted, there was never going to be any other number one pick but LeBron. You know, but but I think that title run that that he had with Syracuse, I mean, that title run is still talked about. You know, and, and, and so I I just think to myself, what I'm I'm trying to put myself in the 2003 mindset. You know, and, and I think was it just because they were in love with this you know European player? And I think I, I, at the time more European players were getting drafted, not as much as today, but you know it was this this mystery. You know, and oh, this guy has the size and. But it just makes you wonder why. Yeah. And like, I, I wonder if we'll ever get uh, that answer from, from somebody that, that was in the Pistons front, front office, you know, but I don't think I, I don't think we'll ever get that. But it's just like I said, that is yeah. one of the biggest what ifs in NBA history. Right. Well, that's what I think that's where, where, where I'm trying to get at is, you know, what was the thought process in all three in that draft room? Uh you know, on draft night where these guys said, Hey, you know what, let's, let's flip the script and let's, let's take a chance on, you know, on this European kid. I forget where Dr. Miltic is from. Croatia, I believe. He is Croatian. Okay. You know, let's take this, you know, let's roll with this, you know, kid out of Croatia. Who knows? He might be this hidden gem. Well, I wouldn't say hidden gem if he's getting drafted number two overall. (laughs) (laughs) I think he he was Serbian. Sorry. He was Serbian. Serbian. Okay. Serbian. He was Serbian, so I, I wouldn't say, you know, it's a hidden gem, but, uh, you know, at that time, too, I think the big man was still uh, yeah. more, you know, not respected, but just more valued more at that coveted. time in the league. Right, more coveted, you know, in the league as opposed to now. It's like, you you know, you, if you see a team draft a center with the number two overall pick now, it's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, unless that guy turns out to be a Joel Embiid, <laughs> uh, a, a Nikola Jokic that has that skill set, you know, it's like, what are you doing drafting a traditional big man um, with that higher pick? So, yeah, I, th- I think at the end of the day, it's it, it's finding out, which we probably never will, the Detroit side of the story and saying, you know, how could you promise? And broken promises suck. I don't care how old or how, how young you are. Like, that's messed up. You don't break a promise. Like, that's just shit. More than once. More than once right. they promised them, you know, which is not just once. Oh, man. Which is when I was like multiple times, you know, that right. that, that, they, that they told them. So it's one thing to say, like, hey, we're probably going to draft you. But it's another saying, dude, like, we're picking you up. Like, we're p- exactly. And like, then you're our guy. <laughs> and, you know, Mel is in there after LeBron got picked because we all know LeBron was going to go number one. And he's like, all right, here I come. And then uh, with the second pick, Darko Militich. And he's like, what? Huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Like, they yeah. didn't say my, that's not how you pronounce my name. And yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and speaking of the number two pick and the Detroit Pistons, there was some Twitter beef recently between the Detroit Pistons fan base and the Houston Rockets fan base that took over my timeline, at least for, for a bit. Now, this all started when Jalen Green, the number two pick in this year's NBA draft, who was selected by the Houston Rockets, said the following in a Yahoo Sports article by Chris Haynes. He said, I wanted to be the number one pick, but as far as let me re- let me repeat, <laughs> I wanted to be the number one pick. But as for the location, I didn't want to be in Detroit, Green told Yahoo Sports. I felt a lot more comfortable in Houston. It felt like a real homey environment. With Detroit, it felt like I was just going back to the G League bubble, and I just got out of the bubble. That's pretty much what it was. In the G League bubble, I don't really have anything to do but just stay in the gym. I didn't have any time to get away from myself. The only time I had to get away from myself was in my apartment. That's what it felt like in Detroit. I want to be stepping outside in Detroit. There are not many things you can do in Detroit like that. You're going to stay in the gym and then go back to your apartment. So that big quote, that large, you know, quote, anger many Detroiters, which is what Google says people from Detroit are are, are called. So they they took offense to that and they started ripping Jalen over those comments. To which then Houston Rockets fans quickly started defending Jalen, just talking trash about Detroit in the prostate, and then Detroit talking trash about Houston, and it just started this whole Twitter beef. So I, I I'm I'm not sure if you saw this on your Twitter timeline, but as somebody who follows a lot of Rockets fans, journalists, press. It was definitely took over mine for for quite a bit. <laughs> I so I had heard he had bashed Detroit a little bit. I didn't know that that was the exact quote. So I definitely see why why there's a huge beef now. 
<laughs> like that makes a ton of sense. Uh, I mean, look, if you're going to bash any type of major city, like, you know, you're going to get some back backlash. Like, I don't of care course. if it's, I don't care if it's LA, Memphis, whatever, small, some small city I never heard of. Like there, you like, people are going to be like, whoa, whoa. Like, don't talk about my hometown like whoa, whoa, that. Yeah. Like, you know, Detroit people were like, yo, it's the Motor City. Like, don't talk to us like that. You know, and, and I, 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 not that I've been to Detroit. I mean, I passed through almost getting you know, almost trespassing into Canada, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> but, <Cool. laughs> that That's a story for another day. Uh, but, you know, D Detroit, I think, is a very... Um, proud city. Right, proud city, very blue collar, like, you know, very movie Yes, Like, yo, if you want, if you, like, if you're thinking blue collar city, like Detroit is definitely up there. And, you know, they're prideful. They're hard, you know, they're hardworking people, I would, you know, I would imagine. So to hear something like that, it's like, you know, it's like, yo, like we don't get the love and shine like the New Yorks, the L.A.'s, the Chicago's, the Houston's. You know, we have to, you know, kind of like the bad boy Pistons, like nobody liked them. You know, so we have to grind our way I like to them. earn our respect. <laughs> well, well, I, I don't, that, that, well, that, that, I, I can't say the same thing about that. But, you know, when you bash, you know, a city like that, you know, you, you're not going to get a very nice response. And, and and it's interesting because some fans went as far as putting Jalen on the top five most hated people in in Detroit, and not just putting him in the top five. <laughs> they put him number one over such people as Matt Patricia, Aaron Rodgers, and I'm not sure what other people were there. But yeah, the, he was number one already from the get go. They, he just he shot up, the, up Matt Patricia. He passed the Matt Patricia, and you know how much they didn't like Matt Patricia. So so yeah, and, and look, to be honest, I think this is all a bit over overblown. Look, yeah. Detroit got the. Detroit got the premier prospect in the draft and taking Kate Cunningham. Ultimately, I think each player ended up where they were supposed to. You know, I think Jalen Green fits more of what Houston wants to do and Kate fits more with the Detroit Pistons. If anything, I hope this creates another basketball rivalry, which is, I think, something that we always need more of. You know, one thing I do wish, I wish the NBA had pitted these two teams against each other in a primetime game. And who knows, we may still get that opportunity, but I would love to see them go up against each other on primetime. And like I said, we may get that because it's the number one pick against the number two pick. Maybe, but then again, it is the Pistons and the Pistons haven't been doing much in recent years. Not to bash Detroit, but like just the Pistons haven't, <laughs> you know, have really fallen off, you know, since those 2000s teams with the Bell with the Chauncey Bellups, the Ben Wallaces of the world, the Rashid Wallaces of the world, you know, kind of like after that squad broke up, I mean, they went from, you know, consistently making it to the Eastern Conference Finals to just, you know, being kind of there, just there in the Eastern Conference, just always just fumbling around in the bottom of the standings, unfortunately. You know who else was on the top five list now that it's coming back to me? Blake Griffin was on the top five list, which I could see how some Detroit fans would be upset at Blake Griffin, who he didn't dunk for two game, for, for two years, and then he goes to Brooklyn in like one of his first games, he throws down a dunk. So I could see where that hate comes from. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, man. Detroit's had it rough. I mean, yeah, they've had it rough. Now, I I will say, Jalen Rose said it best. I think it was yesterday or earlier today. He said Thursday because we're recording Thursday night for you faithful listeners. He said, "Look, I think that was just Jalen saying that being competitive because he wanted to beat the number one pick, you know. Yeah. And had 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 Detroit taken him, he would have happily, gleefully gone to Detroit." Because he wanted to be the number one pick. He considers himself the best player in the draft. And look, I'm sure now the Rockets will say that. We always wanted Jalen, of, of course, because now he's your guy, right? So that's why I think we saw just some competitive spirit coming out of out of Jalen Green. You know, like I said, if anything, I, I, hopefully now this creates a little rivalry between Houston and Detroit. Granted, they're only going to play each other twice a year. Uh, but I think it'll still be fun, those, those two games. Now, I know I'm pretty sure once the schedule comes out, you know, Houston's gonna circle D Detroit and Detroit's gonna circle Houston. So those will be some some fun games to watch. <laughs> yeah, man. Create buzz, man. Get these teams going. I mean, Houston's on the rebuild. Detroit has been on the rebuild for a while now. So hopefully with the arrival of Kate Cunningham, man, they can start uh you know, becoming that franchise that, you know, oh was always very competitive in the Eastern Conference. So we'll see. And hopefully Houston okay. can get back to that you know, making deep runs in the West, in, in a very tough Western conference. Tough Western conference. And look, if they, 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 
they have a good talented team now with this young uh picks uh, that they got but look we're not talking about the houston rocket we're, we're talking about jalen green and his comments with detroit but look that was actually our, our our last topic for this episode but before we go alex i want to ask you what are your plans for the weekend packing just <laughs> that's all my weekend's going to be consumed of is just packing sleeping in a little bit catch up on some sleep because you know working you get up oh, i hope you guys don't hear the vibration of my phone uh whatever uh <laughs> uh yeah just a lot of packing maybe you know catching up on some sleep i want to try to squeeze in suicide squad oh finally nice. yeah yeah yeah, yeah wanna... you have to watch it before they take it off of hbo max like... I, know, man. I already missed out on space jam i gotta wait for it likewise to hop back on. likewise yeah. me too I, I i missed out on space jam too and we actually wanted to make it part of our topics but we just we were so busy at the time because then because at that time i was moving and, and so i was all deep deep in packing you know but uh this weekend is actually a pretty fun weekend for me i every year there's this uh screenplay uh, there's a screenplay contest called nyc midnight short screenplay challenge so pretty much what it is is you have 48 hours to write a five-page script and they give you the location the genre and an object so you don't know what it is until friday at 11 p.m well you know midnight for new york time but it's 11 p.m my time so i have 48 hours to write a five-page script and i have to turn it in on sunday so i try to do this every year just kind of keep me fresh you know keep me create keep my creative juices going and 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 it's just fun just a fun little exercise so i'll be doing it with my co-creator for my show humans uh, series we're gonna just take this as a little exercise so something fun some something fun so that'll be what my week could probably consist of and so you mentioned that i actually did a story in college on like a script like that pretty much the almost that exact same type of competition where yeah. you have two days um but it was instead of writing a script they had to produce like a whole like short film in oh two nice days. yeah I, so, oh, I think i think those are the the 48 hour film challenge right 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 yeah yeah, yeah. so the nice. the group that i covered they they had a a potato masher oh, okay they had to make a movie nice. out of like a potato masher actually it came out kind of decent Okay, kind of like noir s type with a potato oh, masher. Like interesting. It, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was actually real cool. One guy didn't want to get interviewed, but that was okay. Like he was a little shy. He was a little camera shy. Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to prime. Like I asked him a couple of times, but he like he was just like super shy in front of the camera. So I was like, all right, dude, I'm not gonna, you know, I get it, dude. It, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not for everyone. Uh, but yeah, I mean, those channels, I was you know just talking with them and when they said like two days i was like wait you're making a whole movie in like two days and they're like yeah <laughs> and we're like we had they gave us this potato masher and i'm like what the hell are you gonna do with a potato masher like that's just so bizarre so See, yeah, and, 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 and that's why i like these challenges because you have to get creative with whatever they give you so it, 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 it's a it's a challenge you know and, and i i would never put potato smasher and film noir together never so you know kudos to those guys <laughs> yeah so i mean yeah just script writing that's that that that's a work of art to have that type of imagination and mindset that's <laughs> that, that that's got to be something i've been watching regular show again too the was it was a cartoon on cartoon network and like just the freaking bizarre adventures they go on it's like it when <laughs> i was watching one episode where they had to pick up donuts and they ended up getting like so high on sugar that they that they got like so fast that everything was like super slow and they ended up in this like other dimension and it, oh, wow. and it, all, started, and it all started off from just like picking up a box of donuts like that was it there you go <laughs> that, that sounds fun uh but yeah but thank you so much for listening again to us guys come back next week don't forget to subscribe on spotify apple Podcasts, and we're now on youtube this is our second video podcast but thank you again for coming back people don't forget to subscribe see ya deuces Oh, 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 oh,